Hello everybody, this is the What is on the Tabletop podcast. My name is Symbio Joe, you can call me Joe, and I have a returning guest today with me. It is the wonderful Dawn Sipthorpe. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thanks man. Uh, good to be back. How are you doing? How has hobby life treated you over the last weeks? Um, pretty good. I've been uh, working on a new project, uh, so I've been uh, setting up a, a couple new characters for casting, uh, and uh, I, I, I promise I actually will put some of these up on Instagram so people can see it. And uh, I've also been trying to fill in gaps, uh, so I've picked up, I, I have zero Primaris. Uh, so I've been picking up a few Primaris models to, to fool with. And uh, the other thing I've realized is uh, I don't have a single orc. I have models from every army going back decades, uh, but I don't have a single orc, so I need to remedy that. That is an interesting gap for someone with your uh, mileage on the hobby. Um, I mean, <laughs> avoiding Space Marines, quite hard. For most of us, I think I started out with Tyranids, went to Orcs, and then to Chaos, Chaos Space Marines. So they are Space Marines, the spiky ones, um, not the original <laughs> ones. I now with the with the new Primaris, and I think the effort to make them um, more scaled more correctly. I think I talked to someone already about that there is uh, for me a more well more motivation to make a space marine look at it and say yeah that is that looks good i recently made some terminators with uh, gravis armor legs uh, the original of uh, uh, the person I nicked the idea from called them Gravinators, which is also a nice uh, <laughs> a nice title for those. But yeah, it's orcs strike me a bit odd, but on the other hand then no, because orcs are in this weird position in 40k as they are quite frankly football hooligans. With yeah. an <laughs> with an alien Cockney accent, and yeah. Yeah. and a lot of people have uh, a, a pet peeve with that because they are too jolly for the grim darkness of the forty first millennium. I myself do not care about it. I I like orcs quite quite a lot, and I like um, the way. You can kit bash them or convert them quite easily because you just hammer things together and it works because they believe in it. Yeah, I, I was uh, watching a YouTube video on a guy who uh, made a orc stompa out of just out of sprues, and of course it works with orcs. You can do you can do pretty much anything with them. But uh, yeah, bizarrely, I mean, I have some some goblins and some Gretchen. Um, but yeah, no orcs. I don't have a single orc. I can't believe it. And uh, so I've decided I, I want to make myself a, a really, just at least one really good orc model. I want to put together, uh, you know, some a nice war boss probably. And uh, about the Primar Primaris, um, I get lore-wise why people are getting wound up about it, but I think the models do look great. And uh, the kits are really nicely done you know uh so i don't mind it so much but uh as far as space uh, marines go i've got some uh gray knights because they're the ones only ones visually that i ever really liked were the gray knights uh, and that and dark angels look cool with their robes and whatnot but i never i've never been a big space marine player um the first army i sort of patched together and played with ever would have been Eldar, uh, but I very, very quickly went to uh, Tyranids and Gene Stealers, and there I sort of stayed. Um, when did you start said, out I've, then? Oh, well, I mean, way back. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> Do we need a time machine? <laughs> it it, it would have been in the 80s, sort of, I think, late 80s, really. Uh 
was when I first started picking up models and, and whatnot. I still have some of the, the first run Chaos Space Marines um, in, in metal. And uh, yeah, it's funny. If you stand them next to new models, they are stumpy little dudes. They are little solid lumps of, of Marine. Uh, they've come a long way. Uh, you know, people talk about how the Primaris are changing scale and changing the appearance. And it's a matter of like, well, it's happened before. Uh, models have changed over time uh, quite a bit. And, uh, you know, usually for the better. Uh, and like I said, regardless of your feelings of the Primaris, the, the models, models themselves, I think, are really good looking. Um, I do like the, the new Primaris. I think they look nice. So I've just uh, picked up the, is it uh, Judiker? Um, the heroes um, of the chapter is that it? Uh, I the, think so. Yeah. The Judica is the guy with the um, hourglass. Hourglass, exactly. Yeah, because I thought that was such a nice model. Uh, so I picked him up. I think I'm going to convert him though. I, I think I'm going to uh, sort of give him more standard uh, accompany accompaniment. So take off his hourglass, put him a bolt pistol in his hand, and maybe swap out his sword for a power sword, or at least make it look like a you know. A more standard power sword and stick a reaver head on them but it is, uh it is an interesting but, uh, model because he is one of two models i know by now that have a some kind of casual sway about it the mm. one model who does it really well and you do not realize it until you mess around with it that is fabio spile fabio spile has a very casual walk for a That's good. for for a space marine, I <clears throat> I did not realize that un until I messed around with the model and and made a kit bash between him and. Um, that's yeah. See, that's that's one I haven't picked up yet, and I do love Fabulous Bill. I'm a I'm a big fan. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have the old model, and the old model I I've picked up a couple several times over, so I have him in in metal and resin, um, just because I think he's such a nice looking model. And, uh, yeah, I'm still unsure about the new one, but uh, I keep on meaning to pick him up and have a look, because he does look good. Uh, the other Primaris I picked up was a, uh, a Chaplin, um, just because he looks really good, looks really nice. So I love the new Chaplains. I love the Chaplain mm -hmm. on bike because of his um, uh, breast... Uh, chest plate because of his chest plate mm. they they have these stylized ribs who are yeah, look like yeah, plating and i wanted really um i used um Oe amaru aka blue stuff to make yeah. some green stuff prints but i totally misjudged how fine the detail on this chest plate is and it does not um it does it doesn't come well through just by making a well a, a press mold yeah. just a press mold of it um astoundingly on the other side the chaplain that was released with the indomito set with the um skeleton angel on his chest plate that comes along quite nicely if you if you do it Excellent. right and fill yeah. it out quite nice um you, you can get you can still save a lot of detail from that chest plate excellent yeah, because I've I've decided I just want to have uh, since I'm putting together little war bands, uh, I've decided I am gonna have a just a, a little squad of of good looking marines, and I need to to piece together a terminator. I think I'm almost definitely gonna use a gray knight terminator head just because I love those beetle heads. I think they're just really cool. They are are they close to original medieval helmets or are they stylized medieval helmets? I'm not a hundred percent uh, sure. They're they're pretty stylized because they're I mean there are medieval helmets that are similar uh, because they've got a real flat top yes you know they've got a you know a proper you, you could sit your cup of tea down on it but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're they're you know definitely still very reminiscent uh, very derivative of of medieval helmets but I, I just like that look so I've been wondering if I can. Uh, Managed to jam a, a Grey Knight Terminator head into an aggressor body. Uh, see how that looks. Maybe. I'm not... Uh, well, it could work. They have a lot of um, bits and pieces that mm. um, are the 40k look, the aggressors. 
I well, mm. I just found that out by messing around with them. They have um, those little devotional uh, pieces of little bone they carry around with them, and yeah, see, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I can always just whack tons more relics and purity seals on them. You know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, with the end of the day with Grey Knights, just put more purity seals on it, and you're going to be okay. You know. <laughs> Is that a decent amount of purity seals? Hmm. Just slap on a few more. <laughs> you know, it's a matter of like, well, I think yeah. I think this 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 purity seal needs a purity seal. You yes, know, to uh, max, maximum purity. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 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 much purity, even a sister of battle might get jealous. Oh, that's one of the things that I really liked uh, recently with the Gene Stealer cults. Is it, uh, what's he called? Is it the Locus? I can't remember. Uh, the guy who's just standing sort of pristine looking down with yes, his hands on the staff. Uh, and he has his version of Purity Seals. And I thought that was great. That was really fantastic. And uh, I, I was really into that. I kind of like my, my Gene Stealer cults now having Purity Seals. I just have to make myself a tiny little Tyranid stamp, you know, so I can make my own seals, and that'd be really cool. But, that uh, might be... Oh, if, if, you, if you pull that off, that might be something I'm very, very interested in. If I could make little <laughs> Gene Stealer Carl stamps, that would, be, that would be something. But it has to be oof, under, under half a millimeter, something like that. that, that yeah, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to have to be small. It's going to have to be small. They do have some really small iconography. So I'm hoping that I can just sort of pull uh, a pattern off of one of their tiny icons and then, you know, work with that. I'm, I'm good at working tiny, so that should work. But uh, yeah, that is, that is yeah, certainly yeah. A, a skill one should have, except you are Flynnhammer and you're only working on uh, giant gargants. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see i like it i like i like the tiny stuff myself i've never been a vehicle guy i mean i i like some of the vehicles but i don't you know for me i like my infantry i like my which is one of the reasons why i like the tyranids is because it's all monsters uh so it's quite easy to work with um but the vehicles i've always thought were cool but uh I never liked really big models so i tend to sort of tap out when when they get too big um and uh yeah i just i always tend to like my foot troops really but uh i do appreciate uh, the the titans and oh the knights always look so cool i always get tempted by oh you know i like my mechanicus i should really pick up a knight but uh yeah i have no idea what i'd do with it yeah if if you're not playing they are really quite a waste of space in my eyes well i'm also not very much into the epic models that swapped over from well epic to 40k but mm. coming back again to models that were and have resurfaced um i will just quote uh, the gw provo uh, promotion right now what about zotes Oh God, Zote! You know, I have a Zote. I have an original Zote back from the day. Man, Tyranids were were really weird when they first came out because, of course, Tyranids and Gene Stealers were separate back then. And uh, the first Tyranids were just the Termagants, and that was the Tyranid race, and they were a slaver race. Uh, and of course, the Zotes were sort of tied up with them. The Zotes, I think, were sort of like their diplomats, as I remember. But yes. uh, you know, I don't mind if they bring back Zotes, as long as it's done interesting and cool and works. You know, more models are more models. Who, who's going to be sad about another model? You know, and uh, I'm always happy for you know. For me, it's it's bits for the bits box. You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> really, it it is a it, well, it it was a pleasant surprise, but then turned into something weird because in. Uh, for the Blackstone Fortress uh, releases, mm. they released a Zode, mm. and um, it uh, is quite close to the original design. It is a little bit too stumpy for my yeah. taste. Yeah, because I mean, it, 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 Blackstone Fortress, I think, is a really great 
setup for introducing one-offs and individual characters, which I think also they use for gauging the temperature to see if it's worth a, a mass release. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been slowly picking up the odd Blackstone model here and there, just like that Crute. He was such a cool character, so I had to pick oh, him yes. up and a few others. Uh, I didn't pick up the new Zote um, because, yeah, I think it, it really could have been done cooler uh, because ages ago they used to do, I think they, were, they called them Dragon Ogres. Uh, which were sort of a very similar thing. And, uh, you know, they were pretty cool looking. And, uh, you know, I was hoping they would sort of take it more along that way, make it a more sinuous, more, uh, you know, aggressive looking creature. But it is, you know, a quite quite dumpy, quite friendly, you know. But, uh, yeah, man, so it's... <laughs> it's, it's the capybara of the uh, 40k universe. Absolutely, that's <laughs> spot on, man. Yeah, indeed. I'm friends with everyone until I yeah. betray them. No, what I what <laughs> I meant with weird. Uh, first they um, released the Zote for the Blackstone Forest, and then they released a Zote for Blood Bowl, and I was like, um, okay, that happened. Yeah, but why? Yeah. <laughs> I could imagine them being pretty good in Blood Bowl. I mean, the thing's a tank. Yeah, the the. the the uh, problem with the Blood Bowl model is it's even more stumpier than the <laughs> than the Blackstone Fortress model, and it 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 looks so silly, and it is it. Well, they they like um, hitting that notch that is that crossover between Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer Forty K that. Yeah exists now because I think it was admitted that uh, Warhammer Fantasy is a parallel universe and all the universes are tied together by chaos yeah. or the warp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what, uh, the next interesting release regarding that would be the new Belakor Demon Prince. They uh, just teased it and I think that will be a true Demon Prince to behold. Yeah, well, the old model was fantastic. I mean, really nice. Yes. I mean, one of, of of all the Demon Princes, one of my all time favorites. So uh, he's he's one that I have in my collection. Really, really nice, good looking model. That um, I it was one that was on my list to grab for ages, and uh, I was really glad when I finally picked him up. Yeah, but, I did. Uh, yeah, nice model. Yeah, I did sell off um, my Chaos Space Marines and the only two models. Three models. Three models I kept was a Terminator ca captain that was a gift from someone else, and mm. my first conversion I did for that army and um, Belakor, because I, I just bought him because he was such his his wings are top, his uh, face doesn't look in any kind of way stupid like some of the older uh, demon princes did. Yeah, yeah, no, they, no, goofy, just, yeah. just good. Yeah, really, he's really dragony. I think you know, he really gives yes. me a sort of an old classic D and D black dragon look, um, which is you know what I like. Yeah, he's pretty close to <clears throat> um, Diablo from Diablo Two, I think. Yeah, true. Not, 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 that. not that uh, kind of a beefcake that this demon is, but he encapsulates mm. some of that. Well, yes, yeah, scaly, dragonish kind of thing, and his pose is well. It is a pointing pose. We have enough of those, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I can under, I can understand um, that um, people are complaining that there are not enough open hands or hands that are idling. Because every mm. hand, hand you get in the kit is holding something, and yeah, I I always uh, for me in, in my bit spots eh, any open hand any character has those are, are always put into sort of like the grail box of of holy conversions because you, yeah it's so rare. Um, one of my my favorite things was uh, in the racks kit you get uh, a rack that's set up for steering a raider, uh, and he has just two open hands and so those hands uh, yeah every time i get a rat kit those hands immediately go into the box for later usage uh and used anywhere where i need a good open hand um i've been uh, uh i picked up the uh what are they called the you need 
or whatever the the new uh, Eldar sort of trinity. Ah, uh, yes, uh, the, the Ina, Inayat. Inayat, yeah. Inayat, yeah. And uh, I, I picked him up mostly for the uh, male character because uh, I wanted him for conversion because he's just so spectacular. And uh, he has a really nice, open, gauntleted hand. Uh, and uh, I, every time I pick him up and start working with him, I have to fight the urge to just saw that hand off and put it aside because I want, I want to keep it. Because uh, an open, <laughs> gauntleted hand is just such a thing. Interestingly, but, uh, something uh, third-party uh, sellers haven't picked up on. Yeah, well, I suppose they're small and fiddly, you know, mm. and a lot of people... Uh, sort of will do conversion along the lines, but you know it, it seems that fewer people are, are willing to take a, a a blade or a saw to their models and actually start hacking them apart. I'm 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 terrible. I'm relentless. Uh, I get a, a a kit, and the first thing I do is just strip everything off the sprue. Uh, instructions be damned, and I immediately start cutting stuff apart. Uh, just so I have more flexibility, uh, which means, yeah, the the easy to to build molds drive me mad. Uh, I remember the, the 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 old days of when the first plastic kits came out, and those were one pose. Oh yes, and exactly enough parts to make exactly what was on the box. And uh, man, I used to hate those those kits. I used to hate them so much. Uh, and then, of course, we've been spoiled with. Uh, all the newer sets coming out with masses of accessories, masses of open pose, but now it seems they're slowly drifting back into doing uh, set pose. Uh, I do totally understand having easy-to-build push-fit stuff for uh, beginners and people who just don't want to put the time in, uh, but I just hope they don't just completely go that way because, uh, yeah, it's I, I buy the push-fits, have to put them together, and then saw them back apart in order to get really good you know, uh, pieces to work with, uh, which I find frustrating. Yeah. Thank God is... for having a, having a fine jeweler saw though, uh, having a saw that can cut around corners. I can't tell you how useful that is. <laughs> Any guys out there doing conversions, uh, pick up a jeweler saw is, uh, some, one of my bits of advice. Uh, it'll allow you to, uh, cut out some of the finest, finest bits and maintain detail. So none of the big, hard, flat, straight cuts that you have to have with a exacto blade, you know, being able to, to cut exactly around a joint sometimes is really fantastic. So jeweler saw. <laughs> Pick one up. <laughs> I I will most certainly uh, look after one. Well, I already ordered a saw. I think it is not a jeweler saw, but it is a. It has a very thin blade, and I mm. saw an uh, one of my. I I just I just say it right. One of my idols that is uh, Hydra for Hydra on Instagram. He. Uh, Back in the day of third, fourth edition, he did uh, a lot of modeling, Turinid modeling, uh, that was featured in the White Dwarf. And uh, I recently, because he is reworking the Dimacaron from uh, the Forge World uh, Turinids, mm. and he got um, he, he he got the task due to a challenge. And uh, he hates that model so much, and I saw him uh, sawing through um, <laughs> through uh, resin with that saw, and it, it looked like it had a really thin blade. And um, right now, when I do sawing, I actually do it with a metal saw, and that mm. cuts out a lot of material. And, well, I have to put that back in with green stuff. I mean, I'm quite proficient with green stuff right now to do the well, filling and some I've, I've, I've seen your I've seen your I've seen your work you're you're very good with green stuff I mean you do a great job um, I use green stuff a little bit but these days uh, since now most of the conversions I do I'm converting for casting um, I'm using wax to, to fill in because of course uh, it burns out more cleanly and since I'm not painting these guys um, until after the effect if I want to uh, the wax is not a problem um, and wax, of course, is a lot more versatile than green stuff, but uh, no good for long-term hobby. So for what I'm doing, it works out well. Um, me and green stuff get along okay. I would say I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm it doesn't I'm, bite I'm, you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay with green stuff. I can usually, uh, you know, fake it. But, 
yeah, for me, uh, having the jeweler saw uh, works well. I mean, the, the thing that's nice is, of course, you can buy a variety of different blades. So you can get really almost hair thin, fine blades if you, if you really want. Uh, and so therefore, you know, have minimal uh, material loss. You just, the one thing I found is you've got to be careful. If you saw too fast, you end up heating up the plastic enough that it seals up behind you as you're sawing, uh, meaning you have to do it again. <laughs> that is uh, um, but, qu quite some rapid sawing you do there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do a lot of sawings. So. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, the, the hobby kit you sort of build up. Um, of course, a lot of my hobby kit is... Uh, has drifted sort of dual function. So a lot of the, the hobby kit that I use for my uh, miniatures is also my wax kit and my jeweler's kit. So it involves a lot of the same bits and pieces of uh, the files I use for my jewelry. I do tend to use all my plastics, but uh, I just make sure to keep my files very, very, very clean. Uh, and that helps. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I find uh, having a good file and taking good care of it uh, goes a long way. But, uh, yeah, I, I find uh, some of the uh, Games Workshop hobby tools are very, very good. Some of them, not for me. But uh, yeah. I've been enjoying their paint, their, their extravagant paint pot recently. Uh, I, was, I got suckered in and bought one of their fancy paint, paint pots. I gotta say, you know, it's nice. It's really nice. What, what paint pot do you mean exactly? Um, they've it's the one that has the uh, uh, grooves in the back of it for re-tipping your brush. Okay. Uh, and it also has, and it has corrugations on the bottom. So if you uh -huh. sweep your brush past it, it helps, it helps knock okay. out. Okay, okay, okay. Just um, because... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At our hobby club, we had a conversation about uh, stuff um, Games Workshop sells. And you, mm. of course, most of the time get from somewhere else cheaper. Yeah. And and one of the new guys said, "Well, you know, you lost the control over your life when you buy when you are buying that <laughs> painting pot because he he thinks it's absolutely useless." <laughs> and, well, it's and, funny because it's like I've uh, for so long I've just used a jar. You know, yes. I just I've had a jar and that's worked fine, and. Uh, my local games workshop, the manager is a really nice guy. And, uh, he's learned that with me, I don't really care that much about, you know, the big armies and stuff like that, because I'm not a big player. I like little war bands. I like interesting characters. Um, he knows he can usually sell me the fluff and, uh, frequently, uh, he's learned not to offer me the hobby stuff because he knows, um, I come from a sculpting and jeweler background. So my tools are, yeah. For the most part, way beyond anything Games Workshop spits out. Um, however, he did manage to catch me with uh, the miniature handles, the painting handles. Uh, and uh, I immediately picked up a couple of those, uh, the original ones they put out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I really like them. You know, they're, they're really good. And sure, you know, I've used corks and all of that. I've used pill bottles and film containers. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, I really like their handles uh the sort of run they went where they sort of then got super excited and then made three or four different other ones yeah i gave them all a miss because the ones that i've got are fine um and the other thing is he really sold me on this water pot and i was like look i just use a jar you know and he's like oh but this one has this and has that and i was like yeah, you know, but I just use a jar, which is free. And he, you know, he went on and, and in the end I went, well, let me have a look at it. And I said, you know what, just for the fact that it had a little stand, uh, had a little groove in it to put my paintbrush down, which isn't pointing straight up or straight down because neither of those are, are fantastic, but it lets you sort of just st stick your brush somewhere on its side. I was like, you know what, that, just for that. All right. I was feeling a bit flash, picked it up. And to be honest, if you're going to buy yourself a water pot and not use a mug or a jar, I could highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's enough because I'm terrible for being a paint licker. As they say, I always put my brush in my mouth to retip it. Like I'm terrible for it. Uh, well, and but I think, um, on that topic, uh, <laughs> there might be, I, 
Well, I would go so far to say that 50% of all the <laughs> painting, not uh, not even miniature pa uh, well, miniature painting or small brush painting, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it, it the the grooves in the back to retip your your paintbrush once you get the hang of them actually work pretty good, and uh, yeah, you know it is it is utterly ridiculous and utterly unnecessary. Um, however, it does do the job really nicely, so <laughs> so I can't complain. Well, that's interesting to hear because um, I well me as well I do not see the. Uh, the additional value this this could offer my painting right now and i had i got the painting handle quite late i mm. i stuck really long to just holding the model on the base and yeah. well the the greatest downside is if a foot or a boot is quite close to the edge of the base you will rub off some uh, color and then have to go back to it but as i'm not that high high end in my painting i did not bother mm. with it so much but uh, now that i have the handle it is a, a, a big improvement especially to get into little uh, crannies where i did not get before it, it is quite nice to have this handle yes yeah, I, I think it just it just gives you a bit more control, you know, a bit, you know, I like it. The other thing is I do use a lot of Games Workshop paints as well. Don't use their brushes, can't stand their brushes, or I should say their brushes are fine. Uh, however, they're expensive for what they are. Uh, just like their uh, their side cutters, their nippers. Every time I go in there and he tries to offer me the new nippers, uh, the the look of disdain I give him is usually <laughs> enough to put him in his place. Because, I mean, I... I don't, I don't, I don't use a, you know, a God hand nipper, but I do use the Tamiya as sort of a high end Tamiya. And I really couldn't recommend enough. Get yourself a good pair of nippers. Don't get cheap nippers, get good nippers. And that saves you a lot of time. And also cut twice. Don't worry about cutting once, cut twice, cut it once rough off the sprue. Uh, so you have a big chunk of sprue left on it, and then carefully, when you can move the mold, the 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 piece around carefully, then go in with your second cut and cut that nice and flush. And if you have a good pair of of nippers, uh, then you know your nub mark is going to be so much less. You're not gonna you're gonna have to do so much you know little work to to address it. So get get a good pair of nippers. Spend a good you know a bit of money on a nice pair of nippers. Well, I'm but, uh, I'm a bit of a gambling man. There, I'm uh, <laughs> I, I, I just I just do the cut, and it cut, if it comes out nicely, well done, me. And it, it and it if it makes a little hole, it is uh, well not gonna yeah, not, well, not gonna bother with it. it. I I had a friend once who uh, outright was shocked how I do it. It was like, oh my god, what are you doing? You cannot do it like that. At least use a blade and slowly cut it off. But no, <laughs> well, well, because I, I I definitely have my moments of impatience. If I'm if I'm if I've bought a sprue just for particular parts. Um, then I'll pick very carefully, remove the parts I want, but then all the rest, you know, I will just thumb it, just twist and press and just knock them off if necessary. If I know I'm just going to be cutting them to bits later, but, uh, yeah, for, for, if you're doing a model nice, having a nice pair of nippers, it, it really does make a bit of difference. I uh, see. I do a lot of gunpla as well though. So, I mean, having a, a really good pair of nippers is sort of integral for that. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, I just wanted uh, to to pick a little uh, uh, to uh, yeah to pick a little bit around in your open wounds. How is that uh, perfect tech priest <laughs> coming along? Oh God, just I've I've bought now uh, I think four tech priests priests uh, and uh, a pack of Skitari and a pack of uh, the flying fellows. I can't remember their names. Um, and even uh, picked up a Belisarius call uh, to to see if that will give me enough bits to do to do a perfect tech priest. I don't want them to be too big though, uh, because the the Belisarius call model is amazing, uh, but it's huge, and I don't want them to be that big. Uh, so now it's it's sort of also now drifting into a tech priest in retinue, 
Uh, so I want to have a tech priest in retinue now. And uh, I'm finding that I just, I can't put enough, just like me and Tyranids, I can't put enough legs on him. He needs more legs. <laughs> <laughs> more more legs and more tentacles. Uh, 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 just like my Tyranids. All my Tyranids need more legs. So... That is that is an interesting approach. Well, there, um, uh, centipedes and uh, the likes have quite a charm to to them for their just um, snake-like, but also spider-like hor hor yeah. horrificness that they well, are. My 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 high fleet, I guess my my Tyranid high fleet is uh, really heavily based off of a centipede because I quite quite like how a centipede just breaks down into sections, and I like the the idea of the the Tyranid fleet becoming so evolved that basically the base Tyranid is just a little section, and to make a bigger Tyranid, you just put more of them together, um, and you know have slightly evolved sections to put in there, so their Tyranids are almost modular, you know. So if they want to make a bigger creature, they just you know quickly slap it together out of smaller the you know the, the the base sections to build it uh so they've you know they've honed their evolution down to one core piece which they can use to build any anything um that and my uh my gene stealer cult brood now is really it was just going to be a, a magus and a, a couple other characters but now it's really taken on a life of its own and uh they're they're properly getting their own strain it looks like they're they're uh well i've got this idea of after our talk of abominance i i immediately went out and bought myself another box of abominance uh or uh, sorry aberrance uh, aberrance i should say yeah yeah and uh now i'm making uh two new because i've got the my two brothers that i've already made my two big big fellows and i've decided i need two more uh but i want them to be emulating a lictor and a carnifex interesting so uh yeah so one of them's gonna so they aren't gonna be properly play worthy unless you use them as a plays as because they're gonna you know the lictor one is gonna have a pair of uh, rending claws and a pair of scything talons um but of course those aren't options you can take i think with the aberrant so you'd have to have it as a play as if you're gonna use it but as these guys are just being made for uh aesthetics and to to look cool in a group um yeah it's it's fun so my 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 lictor aberrant is is underway firmly underway um and uh yeah i just have to to finish them off uh, and then i'm gonna probably gonna have to buy a whole whole nother box of aberrants unless i can find the bits online to uh make a, a carnifex aberrant which uh, is frustrating but oh well <laughs> what Bits would you want to use to make a carnifex aberrant? I'm very uh, curious. It's, the, it's uh, well, uh, I have, I've managed to get the, because I'm going to use the big crushing claws from, I think, the, the uh, neophyte sprue. Oh, uh, yes. And uh, so I think they're both like left-handed or something, but I've managed mm. to cut one off and, and reverse it. So I, I have a right and left claw. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I think I'm also going to go with Scything Talons for him, so I'm not going to put any sort of a ranged weapon on either of them. Um, and uh, I'm going to go with, I think, one of the Neophyte heads once again. Uh, but the body I need, I think, is from the Aberrant frame, but it's the uh, um, Abominant. So it's the one that has the big proper Gene Stealer back and the long tail. Ah, uh, um, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, so because that's also the one I'm using for the for the lictor as well. But uh, I've cut the legs off, uh, chosen different legs, ch changed the pose, changed the position of the tail. Uh, so he's sort of doing the classic uh, leaning back. So all his limbs will be splayed open because uh, really you tend to get lictors in two flavors, which is either all hunched up and hiding or splayed open about to to lay in some hurt. And uh, I think the when I make the Carnifex, he's just going to be you know a hunched tank of a uh, a variant. Uh, the feeling I want to go is uh, I was reading in some of the fluff about how with the Gene Stealer cults, uh, some of the cults that uh, are from the is it the uh, Emergle? I can never remember the name, uh, but the the tentacly faced Gene Stealers. Yeah, it's the uh, Yeah. Yeah, the, the the fact that the high fleets won't pick them up. You know, the high fleets will come to the planet, but don't pick them up. They just leave them. And I kind of like the idea of this may be one of those cults. 
and so has evolved so long over time and has traveled over time that it's beginning to even drift into its own high fleet so you know it's beginning to take on uh, you know, a Lictor, a Lictor character and a, a Carnifex character. So although they are still aberrants and they're a lot smaller, that you can see that those genes are still trickling around in there and, and pushing for other forms. Yeah, uh, I, but... I had this, uh, this conversation with uh, Flynnham uh, uh, in the last, uh, at the uh, last episode where we were talking about that um, uh, Tyranids that are separated from their high fleet are mm. way better evolved and um, have more character than their original high fleet Absolutely. that probably left them there and th that this is a oddity of of Turinid design right now um, I think there was uh, I don't know who, who made them uh, who made it it was a Carnifex that was adapted to um, underhive living also, oh, that's interesting. Also, a cre it, it gets better. Um, also, uh, f forgotten in the underhive, and the creature itself um, adapted some form of um, anglerfish hunting. So he had uh, on his carapace back a little pole with, uh, well, a lantern, but that lantern was emitting radioactive... Um, sequences or, or waves that you would normally find in old technology constructs to, to, That's to, great. to lure uh, underhive scavengers down to him and eat them. Uh, it is a, a relatively simple conversion, but it has so much character and uh, the, the, the fluff for it is so great. Uh, when you were talking about your high fleet uh, the, with the basic Turinid form that is uh, can combine with uh, more forms to get to the creature uh, the job it needs to do, it's quite interesting for me because I recently saw a deep sea documentary, and in the deep sea, um, uh, simple jellyfish organisms are. Uh, tend to form just a large organism to work better mm. together and i getting re uh, uh, a really much deep sea creature vibe from that also <laughs> are you tempted to call that uh, the voltron high fleet <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing um, you know, my high fleet doesn't have a name. I've never come up with a good name. Every time I've thought of a good one, I've looked it up and somebody else has already got it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to come up with something fancy. And I'm going to have to come up with a good name for my Gene Stealer cult because they're really, really um, getting, a, getting a lot of character. I'm going to have to also... Uh, uh, I, I cast a little uh, Magus, a Gene Stealer Magus, uh, using uh, one of the tentacled heads, so he looks a lot like a mind flare from D and D. Uh, and I've decided I want to. You showed yeah, me that one. Were... You showed me that one. I, yeah, I like yeah, it. I like it, it quite yeah. a lot. Uh, and I've I've decided I want to redo him, uh, meaning that uh, maybe I should uh, put this guy up for uh, adoption for a contest or something, uh, since I'm not. I'm, he's going to be uh, additional to to my needs. Maybe a naming but, contest. Uh, Oh, that's yeah. That's a good just, idea. Just put him out and uh, let the let let the suggestions for uh, for for the gene stealer cult trickle in. On that topic, um, the new cursed city that will come out. I I've, might I've uh, want just... to make a little coven of gene stealer magi now because they have a mage character in it that is a little hunched Do over they? and uh, it, it just comes to head swaps i mean i still have the black store owned fortress um navigator you can well turn into a megas uh, just by head swap and in that kit you get a mage and a priestess you could huh. very well just by head swap turn into gene stealer magi and that is something something new for my main main project road that is slowly coming to an end believe it or not <laughs> <laughs> mine mine is never ending i've i've got projects that go back decades that i still haven't finished there's always so always something uh, the cursed city thing is really interesting i've just seen the 
the first little bits of it i haven't looked into it is that basically the new mordheim is that is that the angle is uh it is most likely blackstone fortress for fantasy it yeah so it's yeah, um, so similar yeah it is uh, a uh, a fix or well variable set of adventurers that has uh, to move through that city and uh, kill monsters collect treasure and get better over time i suppose because yeah. it has a lot of the dices that uh blackstone fortress has and you seem to play it on cardboard cutouts as well what okay. they i I'm not a hundred percent sure if they already announced it that you can get uh, the data sheets to play it and play the stuff in other systems, because there are new vampires uh, coming out as well who also look gorgeous. And yeah, yeah. see, I, I I always do like a good vampire model. You know? Yeah, uh, in I have I have a couple of the old ones, but. In all that new cursed city stuff, I have to say I get the most old fantasy vibes from the ogre it looks so much like 90s games workshop uh fantasy ogre just in pretty yeah, i haven't haven't seen it i haven't seen these guys i'm gonna have to go look them up now and uh <laughs> tack them onto the wish list oh and also i mean you want instant uh gene stealer cult members and and magi just pick up the the uh necromunda de lac gang oh which, yes yeah if nothing else they're fantastic models uh the reason i i couldn't resist them is there a movie came out ages ago called dark city oh yeah yeah uh, yeah it is and yeah. for me the moment i looked at those de lac models i was just like oh it's the strangers from dark city i need them i immediately you know must have them and yeah what a cool cool little set uh, really nice. Once again, fantastic. Really characterful models. Uh, they also remind me a bit of. Uh, there's another movie out called uh, City of Lost Children, French movie, um, and the characters in there, some of the the bad guys, the Cyclops, uh, look very much like that as well. So, uh, both of those uh, movies in my favorites as well. So I, I had to get the Delac. They look great though. Really good looking. Uh, that and the Vansars are pretty neat, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm close to finish of uh, to to finish my uh, Corvus Cabal slash Necromunda gang. Um, Kotos box of minis made the original uh, kit bash. Uh, he he put some uh, scorch Dark Elder Scorches hats on the Corvus Cabal guys, and Excellent. some Dark Elder weaponry, and it fits so well with these guys. I made nine models. I'm close to finishing i just have to do the the <laughs> eyes because it is nine models and i'm so bad at batch painting uh but regarding to the deluxe i also saw um some very very simple but effective kit bash just putting one of the corvus cabal hats the original uh, raven hats on one of these mm. deluxe guys and they uh, uh immediately look like some some uh heinous crow people or, <laughs> or or crow cultists the the only thing that um did not sell me entirely on the deluxe gang was the size of the weapons because they are very tall thin fiddly dudes but they still have those uh, heavy weapons and uh i did not see myself oh, uh, weapons, working around weapons with can them. Weapons can always be swapped out, man. So. Yeah, that is that is right. But it's, it... oh, I've, talking about weapons, one weapon that I just I need to get more copies of, and it's a, a real tricky one to to hunt down. Is I need more hex rifles. I've decided that the hex rifle is one of the coolest looking guns. Just such a neat, neat gun. And uh, so uh, I'm working on a, a, a homunculi. Um, uh, character and I want him to really be kitted out as horrendously as possible. And I've decided he needs a, a hex ri rifle slung across his back. Mm -hmm. uh, that and uh, I'm still working on my. Um, oh God, I've forgotten his name again. Uh, the Gene Stealer cultist cowboy with his three pistols. Kellermorph. Uh, Kellermorph. Um, I have put another arm on him now. He does have another arm. 
And uh, it was going to be like a little holdout pistol. Uh, but I found that I, I fit in just goofing around a perfect arm, and he's now got a bone sword, which I kind of like in the fact that it means he now has a melee weapon, which is nice, instead of four pistols as I was going to set him up. I uh, Once again, not, not for gameplay, just for looks. And he's holding it straight up in the air, and it kind of looks like he's taking windage with it. <laughs> and I kind of like the idea that he's he's got the sword that he's holding up to take to take windage for 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 shooting, you know. And I, I kind of like that because I was gonna stick a whip on him because I thought, oh yeah, three pistols and a whip—that's quite a, a good, you know, black hat setup. You know, I could see him coming to a, a to a, a gunfight and immediately whipping his opponent's gun out of his hand and then you know laying three shots into him. Oh yeah, uh, what a you yeah, know, that is a would very. Be, would, very cine- what, cineastic approach, but what what uh, what people I I might have to check the the current fluff right now. What people forget, and I think what falls flat a bit, that the or at least the original Bone Sword had a mm. uh, well was one creature, a, a little psychic creature that was, and the sword itself is is its horn that is constantly growing mm. out of it. Mm. And um, your idea just to uh, holding the bone sword up to check the wind um, might not be actually uh, uh, what he is doing, but just giving that little creature a chance for him to assess the situation, something like that would be. Yeah, nice. it goes well because it's the, the the fact that the bone sword is an organic thing that is linked to him. You know, was a, the the thing that I liked, and so it's it, he's got it up there, and the, so the sword is could be working out whatever or you know even psychically saying oh there's someone around the corner over there you know <laughs> but uh, i think that i think the fluff for bone swords these days is a is a lot more mundane uh with gene stealer cults it's uh, just a basically a bone sword that's been excreted by uh the gene stealer the you know the patriarch yeah my uh, same in, with the same with the whip yeah in in third edition my heart was bleeding when the bone sword was gone and there were only mm. scything talons that was that was quite a quite a shock to me that that happened but at least it it came back and well i have to check the fluff on it if it is still that little psychic creature because it is um a mix mash well, of uh, psychic I weapon think, i think I, th- I think in this case, uh, this special case for his own personal fluff, I think this sword is going to be an egoed sword, so a sword that has its own personality. So give it almost like a, a vampire hunter D feel, where you know he'll sit there and the sword will sort of fuss at him and and uh, gripe at him to get stuff done or or whatever. I just I but, just uh, got um, the immediate Thundercats reference. Sword, sword of Norn Queens, grant me sight beyond sight. <laughs> oh, and I've, I've finally sorted his hat, oh. and uh, so he's got a got a cowboy hat. And in, it, at the moment, I'm working on a tiny, tiny, tiny inquisitorial eye on the on the on the front of the hat to to give the effect that he's nicked it off an inquisitor, be that alive or dead. Um, so uh, yeah, I quite like him having an ex Inquisitor hat just to to give him the extra edge of being a real real badass. So yeah, um, the, well, uh, it, Inquisitors seem kind of inconsistent with their power level. <laughs> Well, I think they're a big, varied br- bunch. So I think you know you have high level inquisitors, and you have just sort of regular, yeah. administorium level inquisitors. You, you know, so I think you get ones that get more powerful over over age. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I like an inquisitor. I've I've got uh, a sort of Apache inquisitor warband sort of being put together, um, and I have my main inquisitor, which is uh, I think it's Grey Knight. A mix of Grey Knight, Terminator, and Space Marine armor, uh, and uh, the head from I think it's Sanguinarius. Uh, the guy who uh, he, he's flying up into the air has really sort of his armor is very organic and muscly looking. And oh, he's just um, got a yes, great. Yes. That is. He's got a gr- that is a special um, uh, priest of the Blood Angels. I, 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 might, I might botching this, but I know what you mean. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember his name. All I remember was uh, 
I, I wanted his armor for a chaos conversion, uh, so I immediately sawed his head off and put it in a box. Uh, and the rest of his body parted out to chaos. Uh, and his head is now the head of, of my uh, Inquisitor, who's touting a huge uh, flame pistol. So he's got this great open mouth look of sort of, you know, demanding rage and uh, has a big flamer. So uh, he really gives the impression of, uh, you know, a, a good burn the heretic uh, <laughs> inquisitor yeah uh, so yeah he's he's turned out quite nice i managed to make a really nice hat for him i don't know why my keller morph was giving me so much trouble with his hat uh, don the only thing i can do is urge you to to share your work in progress with the world <laughs> i i mean on um, on one hand i really want to see it on the other hand i fear that i want to do these conversions than myself and uh well uh, it is it is ba back to a uh, wild side project road well tomorrow i am uh casting a couple miniatures um i have taken photos of uh, it, it's an aberrant uh, i've taken photos of the aberrant pretty much almost sort of beginning to end Uh, so I was planning on putting the, the whole gallery of photos up so people can see the whole process um, from be beginning to end. And at the moment, right now, uh, he's in the, the most horrifying because he's in burnout, which basically means uh, yesterday I filled his mold up with plaster, which is really the point of no return. Uh, because the moment the plaster is poured in there, uh, the moment that plaster is hardened, you're not getting your miniature back. Uh, you could technically try to break the plaster off uh, but to break off the plaster without utterly destroying the miniature uh, would be very hard and to get the plaster out of all the detail would be almost impossible uh, so once you pour the plaster in you're kind of that's it you could technically get out of it but the moment it goes in the kiln um, that's it that's at the moment um, that character exists only as a void in space so it's literally nothing it's an empty space inside of a plaster mold Uh, so tomorrow I'll be filling it up with bronze, and we'll see if it works. So if it works, uh, in the next couple days I'll I'll put a gallery of uh, pictures up of the whole process, so uh, people can see the the you know miniature going from. Uh, this one was a real real mild conversion. I think the only conversion was I put a uh, a neophyte head on it, and then uh, uh, sticking to my Uh, forearm rule of, of the higher ups in my gene stealer cult all will have forearms. Um, he has a little tiny familiar arm uh, attached to him as well. So he's got his three main arms uh, wielding a, a, a power hammer. Uh, and then he's got this little tiny familiar arm, which is uh, nestled in underneath one of his arms pointing in the direction that he's going to hit. So it's as if this little tiny arm, although it can't do the grunt work of holding is, you know, pointing at the foe, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I quite, I quite like him. Uh, so he's just had some real, real light conversion. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, still I, I showed it so it could be seen. So, uh, just to, to show the process, uh, the only part of the process, which wasn't seen because I didn't think to photograph it, which I should have done, uh, is of course, When I'm putting miniatures together for casting, uh, you've got to fill in all the voids with wax. So if he's got a hollow body, uh, that hollow body has to be filled in with wax. Because if it's not, uh, that means when you're uh, vacuum investing it, so putting the plaster in and, and hitting the vacuum, uh, that might collapse if it's just an open bubble. Or, or it might suck in plaster, which means when you cast it, you then have a big ball of plaster that's rolling around in the mold. So you'll lose loads of detail or it won't cast at all even. So you've got to uh, make sure you fill in any voids with wax. Uh, and uh, that part I didn't show but other than that. And uh, yeah, it, when the casting comes out, I'll, I'll make sure to actually for once put the photos up on Instagram. <laughs> well... <laughs> fingers crossed for that i'm i'm really looking forward to, to it and uh yeah what more can i say that we already burned through an hour again it's really it, wow yeah it is i was uh it's, i'm i'm 
uh, sometimes peeking a little bit at the at the time to show where we're at where we are at and the last time i think was 20 minutes in and now i'm looking down on it we are at the uh yeah we are at the one hour mark and i was like oh this went way too fast <laughs> <laughs> but that but that's a good sign i i really really like talking to you listening to your great ideas when it comes to turnit design i you really well, have man, to it's it's you have to put pleasure, more of it man. out there. Is this? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I I don't have that sway, but maybe uh, I I can can get you in with, I should, mo I should, with modern synthesis I said, uh, to discuss some some uh, Tyranid design stuff because uh, there's a little group of three people. It's modern synthesis, High Fleet Moloch, and for Hydra. And uh, yeah, they are dedicated February to remake one Tyranid kit to look more Tyranid. And oh, wow. what I've heard from you so far, uh, you would you would fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always trying to make the perfect Tyranid, you know. So yeah, it's always 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 on the cards. Always going to try to work for a perfect Tyranid. So, and I've got a special soft spot for. Uh, if we're not talking about gene stealers, I've got a special soft spot for lictors, and I quite like a ravener. Ever since they made uh, the Red Terror, I've been into raveners. Interesting. But, uh, never, never thought their raveners looked quite right. So you know, yes, I've always worked yes. on them. Yeah. It, it, I. It, now that we talked about, it, I think the the centipede look would fit them more. Yeah, it would, absolutely. Would make them more horrifying you, than the snake. Look. You see. You see, with Tyranids, it's always about more legs. You've just got to put on more legs. <laughs> <laughs> I, tr I, try, I try to keep that in mind. Okay, um, <laughs> thanks for your time again. My pleasure. My it absolute was, pleasure, It man. was fun. I think uh, I, I, will talk to, I will talk to you again. I don't know uh, when exactly, because uh, for March I have uh, two guests coming up. Uh, maybe middle of march end of march we will stay in contact my friend yeah of course man of course and i'll be i'll be happy to have another chat with you man so. nice so this is the what is on the tabletop podcast my name is Simu joe and have a have a good one everybody <laughs>